Our next guest is one of the most loved pioneer of the bachata scene in London. She is an incredible dancer, renowned for her individual style on both ends of Dominican and sensual bachata. She is also a choreographer and an international artist. Angela Mariano, um, how are you? Welcome to Dance Spotlight. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Ray. How you doing? <laughs> so, Angela, where are you at the moment? And uh, what is the situation with this coronavirus where you are? Well, um, uh, it's been two days that I'm in Italy, actually, and I'm, I'm self-isolating, so... I didn't manage to go out and explore because we cannot even go out, to be honest. So there is um, there is less freedom than the UK in Italy. And the situation is a bit like terrifying because y you open your door and there is no one in the street. Like, it's like a horror movie, you know? It's like, oh my God, <laughs> I never felt so lonely in my life. I want to even... Today, for example, my neighbors, they, they, they knew that I was that I came here in Italy uh, and they just saw, saw me in the balcony from far and they started to say, hi, Angela, how are you? How are you? And I was like, I'm good, thank you. It was like, it was the only person I had contact with today. You know, I was like, hi, <laughs> from far away. But yeah, this is how the situation here um, where, where do I live? There is not many cases of coronavirus. Uh, so it's quite, a, let's say, safe because they had three cases in the old region. Um, so it, it's, it's, for me, it's less scary than London at the moment. Um, yeah. So I know you're in isolation at the moment. Um, how is the family doing? I know you can't see them right now. Yeah, yeah. My family is, is all good. Thank God. They even far away from each other. My brother is in one house. The other brother is in the other house. They kind of they kind of see each other, <laughs> but they all good and they well they they good they good. So did you have your study there, or did you have to travel a bit further to um to do your studies? I come from a small town in uh, South Italy. The name of the the town is Cutrofiano, and it's a very small town in Lecce province. So the the area where where do I live is called Salento, and it's just on the hill. Of the on the hill of the, the 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 final part of the hill, so it's quite cool because I have the seaside around and I have so much sun. It's like Africa more or less, you know. It's very hot. <laughs> I study here. I done the elementary school, secondary school here in another city close by. It was about ten minutes driving, um, and then I done my university study in uh, Lecce. That is the biggest city. And university study, um, how do you say, in uh, childish education, something like that. I think it's called childish education. It's basically to be a nursery teacher. I mean, yeah, that's really great because that's a transferable skill. Um, I'm not saying um, you're dealing with child, no, yeah. but um, <laughs> the teaching aspect is, is good to what you're doing now. Adults can be child sometimes and vice versa. <laughs> So the next question is, um, is if you can give us one fact about yourself that not many people know about you. I think these things is gonna be hard to say, but okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it go. Okay, I used to hate bachata. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, I do. I used to hate bachata because I start, I start dancing salsa. I'm gonna give it an, an explanation, right? Because I think you want it. <laughs> because when I start dancing Latin dance um, or salsa and going out to social, uh, I was a like, I was a salsera, extreme salsera, you know, hardcore salsera. They just love salsa and they want to have fun on the dance floor. So, but when bachata time, when I do start, it was 2006, bro, 2005, start dancing in the social. I was 19 years old. So basically, yeah, I was enjoying my salsa night in the middle of the salsa night because at that time, bachata party were not existing, only bachata party. It was like going out in the club, you have salsa 
and then you have samba chata. So for me, that samba chata was the break. Like, okay, I'm going to go to the bar and get a drink. I'm going to say bye to that friend. You know, I'm going to go out and chill. That was like, ah, come on, bye chata. I want to dance salsa, you know, <laughs> that's why. So before, were you training other dance styles before you started dancing salsa and bachata? Um, my dance uh, path started with ballroom. So um, I started when I was five years uh, because my mom and dance, they, they used to have like um, a group of friends and hire a teacher, a dance teacher to have fun. I'm gonna go just back on the time. In the time, that's how I fell in love with dance. Okay, um, it's gonna be a long story, but I'm I'm gonna kind of simplify it just to explain. So basically, my I fell in love the first time because my mom and dad, dad were dancing, and I was surrounded by um, music and a lot of dance in the house. They 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 used to practice a lot, so I used to watch them dancing. And then I started liking it. And I was like, mom, can you teach me the step? And it was the mambo step or the cha-cha step, you know. Um, and that's, that's how I started. So I did uh, from five to 10. So um, I did, I've done ballroom dances. Uh, so I used to do competition every month, every, it was, it was an intense situation because um when you do ballroom, you have to compete and then you push yourself to do, to do more. Then I, I, stopped, I stopped ballroom and I started to do um, ballet, contemporary, a little bit of jazz. Um, and then salsa came to, into my life. Okay, so the thing is when, um, when, I, when I started dancing, um, in the ballroom, I've done a little bit of salsa, but ballroom salsa is different than social salsa. is 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 completed in or casino salsa is is completely different. So basically, it happened that um, it was a summer. I guess it was summer two thousand and seven, and I used to um, prepare myself for exam at that time. So I was studying at uni, and my mom went on holiday on a resort, and she asked me to go with her and I was like no mom I don't really want to go you know I want to chill home and just study and get ready for the exam and she's like oh come on come come get a break you know just you're gonna have some sun you know some some fun I'm like okay 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 I'm, I will do it for you so I went there and then one day in the middle of the activity because you know in the resort you have like a the, um, the animation group that they kind of bring you into different activities. So they do like sport, they do dance classes, they do animation. So there was a salsa class and this guy came to me and was like, do you want to come? Come, come. And I was like, no, no, I do ballet. I'm not, I'm not dancing salsa. What is that? You know, I'm like, no, I was so snobby, <laughs> you know, snobby. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, I was like, come, come, come. We're going to have fun. And then I, I, I was, I, I kind of went for my first salsa class in this, in this activity. And then on the same weekend, uh, there was a group of guys, friends of mine that they, um, they offered me this, I think it was the same night or something like that. Uh, I could hear salsa music from far from where I was. And they, and they asked me, do you want to come? There is a salsa night just close by. It's a very cool place. It's close to the beach and blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, let's go. Uh, so I went into this party. And as soon as I arrived into the party, I saw like five guys singing and dancing. It was like Gente de Zona is a reggaeton group from Cuba. Um. So they were dancing reggaeton and singing, all the people dancing and drinking and having fun. And I was like, oh my God, I'm having the time of my life. What is this? <laughs> Where I've been now? <laughs> so yeah, and that music made, made me uh, feel in love with the dance. So I kind of start going a little bit more out in social, salsa social. And that's how I start because I used to go out every night and dance every, every single night. <laughs> and then that's how I started almost every night you know I was at uni I had time so 
so it was good. It was a good time. <laughs> so it sounds like the dancing bug got you that time. Um, so during that transition period from dancing ballet into a partner dance, um, was there any uh, transition period or getting used to this different type of dance? My first dance instructor, actually, um, um, I noticed myself because I it was very hard for me to step from from ballet into partner work, partner dance, because I was completely stiff. Like I used to do pirouette by myself and a, a lot of arms things by myself, so I used to have a lot of control of my body. But the fact to give someone the control of your body, it was it was like I had to work in it because at the beginning was the struggle of my life. And the dance teacher, I remember that, he used to tell me, you need to trust me. You need to give me a little bit more trust, right? Because, you know, that's how it is. Um, and then, yes, and that's how it was. It. And I, when I click, because you need, when, when you understand that mechanism, I think everything it will go smooth and easier. So you have that um, distinct way or style how you have that confidence when you're dancing how you're moving how you're flowing and how you're feeling it's just something that yeah. you only do thank you thank you a lot thanks so much so to continue on the question earlier um you said that you didn't like bachata yeah um, so when did the period come when you started to think and feel that oh, I really like bachata and this is something that I want to do more of. Okay, bachata, um, I, at that time it wasn't, the, I'm talking about the dancing, not the music, okay? So the dancing wasn't that big at the time. So for me, I used to listen a lot of bachata, um, but then there was this guy coming out with, that is Prince Royce with this album, and then I fell in love with Prince Royce because he kind of mixed the R&B with a lot of Latin, you know, and I love R&B. Um, so Toby Love was one of those as well. So I'm an old school bachatera. I used to love old school bachata because, I don't know, it has a different feeling. It kind of, I don't know, there, there was more lyrics, more... I don't know, less, less computerizing things and more passion, I guess. I don't know. Uh, singer used to play, like, it was Aventura. I used to love bachata, and I used to listen bachata, but I didn't used to love the dance because it was too close sometimes. So it was for me, okay, I'm going to dance with my partner bachata, but I will not feel like dancing with all, like, everyone. So what happened is that I, that I arrived in London, or I went to London, let's say. <laughs> I went to London, and at that time, um, I used to be a waitress. So that was my first job. Um, I used to work in this Italian restaurant, and my friend that was Italian was like, should we go out and dance at Bar Salsa? And I was like, no, really? There is a salsa place, let's go, let's go. Where is it? Where is this place? And he was like, it was like in Soho, he's in Soho. I was like, okay, let's go. So we went to this place and, uh, and we went on a Thursday night. It was a very Latin night. It was a Colombian night because this, this friend of mine was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna to be there because I like the girls, Latin girls, let's go there, you know. So as soon as we arrived into this club, this friend of mine disappeared. I didn't even know where it was there. So... I was like, okay, I'm by myself a bar salsa. Let me go and drink something. I got two options. Oh, I got to drink something. I'm going to go to the DJ booth and just wait for someone to invite me to dance. So when I get to the decision to go to the DJ booth, then Julian was DJing there because at that time on Thursday, he was, um, he was working uh, as a DJ there. And, and, and Julian ex I think he knew me or he understood that I was Italian and just he say, um, shout out to me like, hi, how are you doing? Are you Italian? And I'm like, yes, how do you know it? So from there, we started the conversation and we had the first dance that was a bachata. So he asked me to dance bachata and I was like, okay. 
let's dance bachata. And then we had this song uh, that it has a lot of break. Um, so it has a lot of like um, break in between the music. So it was a kind of new bachata song. And then we couldn't kind of, and I couldn't follow every movement it was doing to me. And it was quite cool, the dance. We had so much connection. Straight away, we were like, oh my God, that was amazing. Thank you so much. You know, when you have a good dance. And that's how it was it that we met each other. At that time, um, I used to work already for, uh, as a, um, a Cuban salsa teacher in Streatham. And then he asked me to teach together from dance. From there, it started the, the collaboration with Julian. So after, um, how was it being a dancer and then now becoming a teacher? How did you get the opportunity? Um, at the beginning, I well, what happened to me was that already I, I used to um, teach. When I arrived to London, I... I I started um, teaching collaboration with um, a very big uh, family that they do Cuban salsa in uh, in South London and a little bit they spread out. Um, so because yeah, I, I I went dancing now and then I met this guy and then this guy asked me to kind of collaborate and assist and then from there I started my my teaching career, let's say, and then after that. I met Julian in my past life, and then from there, I started living what I used to do to invest my time into bachata. So I kind of choose to do something new for me, even though I love salsa, Cuban salsa, to do bachata. And bachata was pretty new for me, but I, I, I don't know, I just felt it. I, it was a new dance. And it was just the beginning. I, I felt that something was coming out and I felt that bachata would become big. And we invest a lot of energy because we knew that people would love bachata as we fell in love to bachata. And we knew that people would fall in love. That's why then we start to do the night and, and do not just the night, are the night and people kind of respond well and then from there then the bachata revolution started and a lot of people fell in love with bachata and bachata became global so from there we had a lot of connection as well and a lot of artist collaborations as well um and that's how we started so this is a very current topic and i always wanted to ask you this um angela you're one of the most uh, naturally stylist dancers uh, that we have in London. Um, so I wanted to ask for you, what is lady styling? For me, styling is when you see someone and that you fell in love because you like the style she has. Now, I'm not talking just about dance styling. I'm talking about how she moves, how she is, how she walks, how she acts, how she presents herself, how she interacts with people. You know, there is so many things. But, yeah, styling is about appreciate a lady styling, a, like someone. That's, for me, what lady styling. Now, we talk about the dance. Yes, you will like the style, the dance style. That makes sense? No, yeah, so I totally get what you're saying. Um, so you're saying that you're giving them the, the tools so that they can Definitely. add something to their personality yeah, while yeah, they're yeah. dancing. Exactly, yes, because yes, when you when you do about styling, I mean I'm talking about myself when I do when I do teach lady styling, it's not just about okay, let's let's learn a routine. Okay, that's the goal. But then after that is experience and then it's about giving like giving girls confidence to act and be sexy or be okay and confident while they dance so everyone has a different interpretation of styling and that's the beauty of it because as, as every person and every girl every well every lady is different um that's that that's kind of it has to be very natural with the personality as well you know 
Yes, I do teach routine. I also, every time I do styling classes, I like to give different interpretation and I actually adapt uh, usually the style and give different options to them to understand which one suit them the better. Make sense? I'm not forcing them to do something like that is my way. I always think that my way is what I personally like, but if you don't like it, you can change it in different ways. So currently, would you consider yourself as a solo artist or are you uh, willing to teach with other people and have some collaboration? I do consider myself a solo artist um, because um, what is my dance career life? I invest a lot in different dances as well. So I kind of collaborate with people. I like and I love collaborating with people that I do estimate and respect in what they're doing. And I like to do different things as well. Um, uh, when someone inspire me or, you know, when you, when you find someone as an artist interesting, um, as the music is good to collaborate, even dance and art form is, is good like to collaborate with many people as possible. So yes, I'm up for collaboration. And I think that we actually need to collaborate more and to bring community instead of against each other to work together and love each other a little bit more. But I guess this is with time. And after this, all these <laughs> war happening, I think we're gonna start loving each other a little bit more. So before, um, not many people would know about this, but you were the first people to collaborate with other artists to teach um, uh, a, a, their routine um, to, to your students. Um, I know it's quite common nowadays, but before you were the first people to actually to organize that and make that happen, um, you were the first one to bring um, Island Touch to, to London and now it's, it's quite a common thing nowadays. So you guys did it first. Um, so how did this collaboration get started? The collaboration started with um, uh, Tanya and Kor, so Takala Lemana, because um, uh, they were our first aspiration in terms of dance. So we, we, well, we bring them down many times in London and they give us give like workshops. So we kind of start a collaboration together. And when they uh, offer the opportunity to have this collaboration, we took it straight away. And we kind of, I remember that it, it was, well, it was an amazing time at that time. We, we kind of start with student group. Um, we saw so many people growing. Um, for me, it was an amazing experience. I will always remember that time, and I'm really grateful because it was it was a learning experience for me as well, for both of us. I think for Julian as well. Very, very. Um, it was new for us for, to work together, uh, to work with with people as well, and to work with Atacal Aleman as well. So it was in, it, it, like a lot of things involved. Uh, it wasn't easy, but it was um, it was a good time, and I had so many nice memories. And you were there as well. <laughs> I actually want to make this as a saying a very big um, hug to Julian, because um, you know it's been going through a hard time at the moment. So I want to be. I'm going to send him a big hug. That's it. <laughs> so now, uh, at the current time, um, you've just wrapped up Mamacita season one. Um, are you looking to do a season two? Of course, it's going to be a season two. We're actually working on it. It's been like five, five months that um, um, well, I'm working with with them in the second season new routine. Uh, this routine is gonna be quite interesting because um, I don't know, you know, I have always a uh, different way of thinking about Coro. I don't know, I just think that um, Mamacita is a very 
uh, it's like uh, my little project in a way. So I always um, empowering girls and women um, to be the best version of the self. So yeah, this project is a different, uh, involves a lot of interpretation and the new cover is quite a challenging for them as well. But yeah, we can't wait for it. Now we've been stopped about this virus, general virus of practicing, but we kind of keep the, the practice online. <laughs> so as part of uh, evolution, now you are a choreographer and you have choreographed your own um, performance group, um, Mamacita. So how did that, how did that idea start? So Mamacita project started in uh, 2018. So it's been like two years. Uh, my idea was the, um, the idea to create um, a group of girls and give them kind of um, empowering, empowering women. So it's about giving a, be a more it's like self-confidence, uh, set themselves for what they are, um, yeah, because I've been like I've been running groups before, and what I found interesting is that to be a leader, you have to be um, strong or motivating. Um, and then I have so many friends that they will like tell me story of the life. So I collect a story. And that's why this routine, the second routine that I'm doing is very like, um, is from a poem called Stila Rice. Um, so my inspiration of the choreography for the second Mamacita season is about Stila Rice. I'm not gonna say more, but in a way, that's 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 the thing you know uh, because women be suffering for a long time so i think this is our time to shine and to um make the world understand that you know woman is like a flower you need to you need to respect what she is you know and that's it this is mama sita project i think um empowering uh, girls or let's say women um, with dance that have to have restriction of ages, religion, cultures, ethnicity, you know? And that's, that's the mamacita for me. Like I have people, I have girls from all around the world, France and South Africa and um, Ecuador, uh, uh, Paris, like France, Spain, you know? Uh, Bangladesh, wherever, you know, it doesn't matter. We can dance, we can be empowering ourselves instead of hating each other. We need to, we need to be like, kind of help each other instead of going against. So you've also have experience in creating music video. And there's one particular one where you took the lead. Um, I think it's Carlos Paul Amiga 2. Uh, how was that experience? It was quite interesting because um, for the first time I'm I I act <laughs> so and I, they, when it was very like um, uh, something that I didn't expect because I thought I'm gonna just dance uh, but then they asked me to kind of uh, be the main uh, uh, protagonist you say like that protagonist. So yeah, I had to, <laughs> I had to act, and then I was in a way very like, okay, what can I do? Like, I don't, I didn't, I never act in my life, so it was the first time. But then it was very smooth and natural that, um, that it went, it went okay, <laughs> it went okay at the end. I had a lot of fun. That's the important thing. And I want to say thanks to Carlos Paul Music. It was very great experience. It was very nice. I do like cinema and I do like uh, singing a lot. Maybe not pe many people know that, uh, but I never had the chance to study. Um, uh, but yeah, why not? I mean, 
I do I do like to do different things, you know. In life you never know was was gonna come next. So why not? Why not? Why not? Oh, and I remember this as well. Uh, I think you should get credit for this. You and Julian Marmolejo, um, uh, you performed in front of uh, thousands of people uh, during a Romeo Santos concert. Yes, that was another great experience of my life. I think it was the most um, scary one. I have to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, that one was like, um, when I when I went before the performance behind the Romeo Santos concert stage, um, I was so terrified that I left the stage. I was just about to perform and I was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to step back. I was like, no, no, no. I used to perform in front of people, but to see seven, eight, 8,000 people like that, it was freaky. But then at the end of the day, it was uh, the best experience I had in my life. And to perform before Romeo Santos is, is an honor. So, Angela, um, you built up this uh, big community of dancers uh, all across the world. Um, I know it's a really difficult time and um, everybody's um, going through a tough time. Um, uh, do you have any message for everybody um, to your friends and your followers? At the moment, uh, we uh, are going through a very hard time. Um, I know that sometimes in, in these days, you can kind of probably uh, feel a bit depressed, you can feel down. As I say before, we need to stay up. That's my message to you guys. So for me, this is the right time to think how lucky we are every day to enjoy life and have 24 hours the freedom on do what we want that's what we don't have anymore we don't have freedom so i think after this we're gonna come back strong we're gonna come back free again we're gonna value life in a different way um and so many things will change after this crisis right now now, my, pos my message is to be positive, to be strong, to keep like, our mind active always, and to be aware, of course, to stay safe. And another message that I want to give is stay home because, you know, you can save your life and other people's life in this, at this moment. So please stay home, stay safe. Everything will go. We, we will go through this. We will go through this, I'm sure, I'm sure. So now we have a series of viewers' questions that we ask our guests. Uh, so for the first one, uh, could you give us a quick tip for the beginners? Okay, the beginners, I want to give one tip that is to be patient, okay? And then everyone has been through what they have gone through. Okay, so to don't stress, to just be patient, to learn the step properly, and that to think that repetition will help you to improve, and that everyone was a beginner at one point. <laughs> so, Angela, do you have uh, tips for the ladies out there? Um, any tips for following? Uh, I do have a tip. Um, my tip is to um, think that dance um, is um, dance is expressed in uh, two ways. It's like a conversation. So basically, what you need to understand is that for some leaders, you can't force the movement, or for some followers, you can't force the movement. So you need to share things together. You need to be a teamwork together and work as a couple or as a teamwork, as a team. So basically, it's like a conversation. So you're going to, like what we're having now, you're going to ask me a question. I'm going to respond to you. The same thing with dance. And then everything has to be very smooth and natural. Every time that you do a force move, it's because either way, one of the two doesn't want to doesn't do it. So don't force the move, never force the move. 
or never be too rough on the on on leading so for the next question uh let's imagine that you've been working quite a lot and um this is the first night off that you're gonna have so you you have um a free night to do whatever you want um so what would you choose to do and what would you like to do to relax home <laughs> home chilling cooking um I'm, i like to stay home i'm very I'm, I'm i love being home and and chill uh, i love to have my my free time um i'm i love watching tv or netflix you know um i do like to be um like apart from socials well i like my free time you know a cup of tea uh netflix cooking that's my free time you know and i love that time <laughs> so who has been your idol or your inspiration in life because there is so many this is a hard question but um uh let's say my my first aspiration and my like let's say that definitely is uh one of those in batata you mean right or in ad dance oh my god this is a hard question very hard question um well one of my idol is my dance teacher definitely she's a con- she's a contemporary ballet dancer she's my first aspiration i wish to be like her one day <laughs> uh, her name is lina 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 kiriatti so she's she's my 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 teacher what what she made like the hardest time of my life and on the dance career tough and and i will always be grateful to to my teacher to her because that's the only way to get better you have to be tough <laughs> sorry guys you need to go through a lot <laughs> another idol another idol sorry to interrupt another idol in terms of bachata probably attacca il alemana mm-hmm. uh well alemana for me another one is probably um, judy she's that also she's one of my friend and the nade idol in bachata can be jorge so the next question is name three people you enjoy social dancing with well okay definitely one of those is ataka uh is another experience it's like it's like yeah when someone has experience in dance and it kind of i even love dancing salsa with ataka is is an amazing experience. Um and another one is probably Corke Bachata. Um I love Corke. Well, Julian. Julian, I love dancing with Julian. Uh who else? Who else? Who else? Three names, right? You got the three names. Uh and I also do love dancing with Angie. Angelica Marion. I love dancing with her um and I love to dance with Carolina Rosa as well. Oh my god, I got so much connection with Carolina as well. I love her. I love her. I love all these people that I mentioned. I love them. I think they great 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 dancers. Do you have any tattoos or piercing? Yes. <laughs> I have I have two piercing. One is here on the nose and one is on the belly button and then i had one to two only but i'm planning to do another one <laughs> and i was the person that will say i will never get a tattoo and look now i want to do have lots <laughs> okay so before we close our interview um we'd like to find out what you are doing during this time so are you doing any um live classes or dance challenges or any private classes I'm currently yes I'm doing live streaming classes um today I actually finished the second one um I've done one last week 
and one today. And that's on my Instagram page and Facebook page. And um, I am, um, yes, I do private. I mean, I got a lot of time. So I need to keep myself busy and I do, I do, I do give classes. Yes. <laughs> that's a new way to do classes it's kind of interesting because I don't have people so it's hard to communicate uh, but you know it's an interesting fact and yes that's what we have to do you know <laughs> if you want to still keep dancing in a way I run classes every Sunday um I usually do 4 p.m. Italian time, 3 p.m. in UK. Um, and you can find out those, uh, all the information. I usually put them in my Instagram page or Facebook page. So if you want to contact me on Facebook, uh, my name is Angela Mariano, as it is. And on Instagram page, my name is um, underscore... Angela underscore Mariano underscore. So finally, if they wish to make a booking, uh, let's just say that they want you to come to their congress to teach or they want you to come and teach a class, um, what is the best way to contact you? You can contact me on, um, on uh, email. My email is angelamariano87 at gmail.com. Um, or if you can got you can got contact by Facebook, I have a page as well. Uh, I usually manage the booking over there, and the name of the page is uh, Angela Mariano with uh, my logo on it. Guys, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video. Bye. <laughs>